I was getting ready to do a little something with stepper motors. Nothing fancy, basic setup, no chopping, no pulse width modulation, just a bunch of GPIOs and a double H bridge, you know, to get familiar with the topic. So I got some stuff from eBay and here's the problem. The motors that I purchased are rated for only 2.55 volts, which is pretty inconvenient because the lowest voltage I have to offer is 4.5 volts. Normally that wouldn't be much of a problem because according to random people on the internet, these motors can really take a beating with regard to over voltage. But what's worse is that the coil resistance of these motors is super small, only 1.5 ohm. That means if I were to connect it to a 4.5 volt supply, it would sack out 3 amps and send my H-bridge and motor to electronics heaven. The bottleneck being the H-bridge at 0.6 amps. According to my calculations, the easiest solution would be to throw in a resistor of 6 ohms to provide the missing resistance. However, we're still talking about 2.4 watts here. And that of course would toast your average quarter watt resistor. At that point I realized that the problem exceeded my horizon, so I got rid of these stupid stepper motors for now, and instead got this one. So let's take a look. There are countless lectures on stepper motors, but the problem I've always had is that they're either explaining the principle in a very simplistic way, without even mentioning that there are numerous types of motors, or they throw technical drawings at you which are so overloaded with information that it's hard to make a connection to whatever you thought you already knew. So I took the liberty to extract the best of both worlds and compile it into what hopefully will be a simple yet accurate interpretation of a so-called hybrid bipolar stepper motor. I don't claim for this to be scientifically correct in any way, so if you're writing a better thesis on the topic, you should probably watch another video. The basic setup of a stepper motor looks like this. The straighter consists of several toothed sections, each connected to one pole of an electromagnet. The exact number of sections isn't important, but there should be at least four. Most motors I've seen seem to have eight, which I guess improves stability. In this example, I'll use four sections with three teeth each and an angular distance of 40 degrees. The coils are divided into two groups, A and B, and each group can be energized independently. In this example, the sections are arranged in a clockwise manner, starting at the top, A0, B0, A1, B1. The indices indicate polarity. In other words, if positive current flows through the A coils, the A0 sections are positive, the A1 sections are negative, and vice versa. I know it sounds funny, but the general arrangement doesn't matter either. In fact, none of what I just said really matters. You could have five sections with a random number of teeth arranged in whatever way you like, as long as the sections don't overlap, and as long as the straighter teeth match the rotor teeth. Not a number, but an angular distance between teeth. In this example, I'm using nine teeth on the rotor, because I already assumed the angle to be 40 degrees. Every rotor tooth can have four different alignments with the straighter teeth. Full alignment, quarter past the previous tooth, no alignment or centered, quarter to the next tooth, and full alignment again. Motion is created by pulling or pushing sections of the rotor teeth from one type of alignment to the next. The rotor is polarized axially, meaning that each side of the rotor has constant polarity. Let's assume we're looking at the motor's south end. I said earlier that the general arrangement of the section doesn't matter. However, the precise positioning is of utmost importance. Let's pretend we're designing a stepper motor and we need to fine-tune the sections. We start by placing A0 somewhere and then energize the A coil with a positive current, meaning that A0 will become positive. The rotor teeth nearby will fully align, at the same time A1 will be negative and will try to fully unalign. So in order to create a stable position, A0 must be positioned in a fully unaligned way, for example here. The current to the A coils is cut and the B coils are now energized. The goal is to place them in a way that a clockwise rotation is initiated. We can do this by placing B0 at the quarter past position, for example here. Consequently, B1 must be placed at the quarter to position. When the B coils are energized, 
B0 will attract the nearby teeth to assume full alignment, B1 will repel nearby teeth to fully unalign. These are the first two steps of a 35 step revolution. Doing this once again with reverse polarity for A and B concludes what is called a four step full stepping cycle. The complete table looks like this. As you probably don't know, I have a thing for user interfaces, so I put one together for this experiment. In the first row I can select the stepping strategy. For now this setting doesn't do anything, so I'll leave it as it is. Internally it will use full stepping one phase. In the next row you can see the buttons for continuous motion, left and right, a stop button, as well as manual step increments in each direction. The speed is scaled between 0 and 2 rounds per second. Since the USB connection is limited to about 1000 Hz, I won't be able to push the speed much further than that anyway. At the bottom you can see the current GPIO status for the four pins that are connected to the L293. Obviously for higher frequencies it's pointless to look at it, but what the hell. Speaking of hardware, let's take a look at the general setup. The device I'm using to iterate through the stepping table is the IO Warrior 40. There is another video on that topic if you're interested. The input pins of the L293 are connected directly to the board's GPIO pins. The motor that I got as a replacement for the original ones is another NEMA 17, 200 steps, 0.4 amps at 12 volts, which cooperates much better with the rest of the specifications. On the H bridge, one coil of the motor needs to be connected to pins 3 and 6, the other one to pins 11 and 14. The order doesn't matter. One easy way to find out which set of wires belongs to the same coil is to hold them together and turn the motor by hand. If you feel an increase in resistance, you know you have the right ones. As for the power supply, I've got 12 volts coming in distributed to the L293 directly using pin 8 and over a voltage regulator that is tuned to 5 volts to pin 16. The rest of the pins are connected to either ground or 5 volts according to the datasheet. In summary, I can say that all works as expected more or less. The fact that I had to discard the motors that I had originally planned for this demonstration bothers me somewhat, but I should be able to get them to work using a different approach. Another problem I have encountered is that I'm not quite getting the speed I should be getting. The software is tuned to 120 RPM, which is 2 rounds per second or 400 full steps per second, and since the USB connection runs at about 1000 Hz, I should be able to get twice as much. However, when I try, the motor starts stalling. Maybe that's because I'm not using flyback diodes, or maybe there is a problem in the code, who knows. In the next video, I suppose I'll bring the stepping code to the 80 tiny and see what happens. That's it for now.